Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to look at the float and clear properties in CSS, which can be used to arrange content on a page. Uh, in one of the previous tutorials, we looked at how to create divs uh, and spans uh, on a web page. So if you haven't watched that tutorial yet and you haven't used divs, then go back and watch that one first. Um, now, the float and clear properties can be used uh, on uh, all different kinds of HTML elements on a web page. You might want to uh, arrange the page so you might have an image on the left side of the page and then text on the right side of it or the other way around. Uh, but often it's used with things like divs. All right, so if we want to create different maybe columns on the page or if we want to divide the page into different sections like the um, menu navigation uh, bar up the top maybe a sidebar on the left and the main content on the right, maybe a footer down the bottom that uh, contains some links and things like that, we can use the float and clear properties to arrange a page like that. So with the float property, uh, an element can be pushed to the left or the right side, uh, letting other elements on the web page wrap around it. So it's often used to uh, maybe uh, move an image to the right side of the page or uh, to um, sort of stack uh, divs next to each other so that you can create columns. All right, so that's what the float property is used for. You can you can float something to the left uh, or, or float something to the right or um, stack things next to each other uh, horizontally. The clear property, um, that allows us to specify which side or sides of an element um, that are floating elements are, that aren't allowed to be next to. So uh, we can say, for example, clear left, which means that we don't want to have anything on the left side of an element um, and it would move that element down. So it's occupying its own space and there's nothing to the left of it. Uh, we'll have a look at that, at an example of that in just a moment. So we can set these properties um, like float. We can set uh, it to none or left or right. Um, so uh, let's have a look at some examples. Um, what I've got so far on this web page here, I've got my HTML code here on the left. And in the body section, I've got an image div. I've got, well, sorry, I've got a div called image. All right, so I've got a class here called image. And inside that div is an actual image. All right, and it's uh, occupying 100% width of that div. All right, so I've got a div with a class called image. And then below that, I've got a div with a class called content. And there's just a, a paragraph in, in there um, containing some text, all right? We don't actually need that class for the paragraph, so I'll just delete that. Now, at the moment, the web page looks like this. Um, we've got two divs, on one on top of the other. First one's containing an image, which is taking up 100% width of the div. And then below that, we've got um, another div called content and it's uh, got some text in it. So that's what it looks like at the moment. But if we go to our CSS code, which is on the right here, I'll just make some more room. What we can start doing is saying where we want these divs um, to, to move. So how big we want the divs to be and whether we want them stacked next to each other into columns or whether we make, want to make sure that they're on on, on top of each other uh, or one below the other, uh, that kind of thing. So let's have a look at some code. What I'm going to do is for the image class, so the div that uses the image class, I'm going to give that a width of 40%. All right, we'll just add some padding as well, small amount of padding, just 1%. All right, and let's do the same for the content class. We'll say width. 40% and padding 1%. All right, let's go back and have a look at the page. And now we've got, um, we've shrunk those divs down. So they're just about 40% width of the page, but there's also a bit of padding around both the image and the uh, content, text content. Okay, but we can still see that the divs are occupying their own spaces uh, vertically. So they're just stacked on top of each other. But what we could do is we could make this text here move to the right side of the image. Okay, 
So to do this, what we can do is use the float property and we can say float left so that these things are these are elements or divs are stacking next to each other uh, or what's on the, the left of it. So starting from the left, sort of stacking uh, next to each other. So what I'm going to do is for the image, I'm going to say float left, uh, which if we refresh the page doesn't really do anything. It's still just sitting there to the, to the left, but we can say for the content to also float left. And if we save and refresh, we now see that the image, uh, image is on the left, but the text is now next to it on the right. So we didn't say float right, we said float left. So the way it actually works is when we say float left, um, we've got float left for the image and float left for the text, they're actually just going to keep stacking next to each other. So, um, so we've got the image on the left, um, but then next to that, we've got the text. And if we had something else that we said float left, if there was enough, um, if it was small enough to fit next to it, it would also stack here with the other things to the left of it. All right, so um, float, when we add float left for a number of different elements um, where their widths add up to less than 100% of the page, they're going to stack next to each other horizontally. But now I might want to say, all right, um, make it stick to the, to the left, but I don't want the image to be um, to the left side of the text. So I could say clear left. What that's going to do is with this content div, the text, it's going to look for anything that's to the left of it. If there's anything to the left of it, like another div, then it's going to move down. It's going to clear. All right. So if we save and refresh that, we see the text moves down. All right. Now we could rearrange these divs. We might want to have, um, say, the image on the right instead and the text on the left. So we could just change the order of the divs if we wanted. So now content is above image. And for the image, we might say float right. And for the content, we might say float left. And now they've just swapped position. All right. But we can see that there's a gap here. So I've said float left for the text, float right for the image. We can actually see the image has moved all the way over to the right. If we wanted the image to stack next to this content here without being all the way over to the right, then for the image, we could just say float left as well. All right, and it moves over to the left, um, but it's still stacked next to this text. Uh, okay, if we wanted the image to move down and occupy its own space, then we can say clear left, or we could say clear both as well, so there's nothing else next to it, and if there was another div um, below. so. If we refresh the page, it moves down, All right? Okay, uh, if we were to add another image here, if we just copy it and paste that, save and refresh, you can see there's the text and the image and then the image again. The two images are not next to each other because we've said for the image, clear anything. If there's anything to the left, basically move down, okay? Now, what if we were to change the width to 50% for the image and the content and we said float left, but we got rid of clear left. So now they should just be sort of um, taking up half of the page each. So like two columns taking half up half the page each. If we were to refresh, would that work? No, it doesn't. All right. So we might think that the text would be over here on the left and then the image over here on the right side of the page because they're both, you know, 50% and that adds up to 100%. But what we need to factor in is other amounts as well, like padding, margin, uh, border. So if we have any padding or a margin or a border, they also add up as well. So this is actually adding up to more than 100%. Uh, if I reduced this to maybe 45% instead, then they would fit. Okay, so just remember that margins and padding uh, and borders also uh, are included. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching.